Somebody asked me once, so what would the Beerman world look like if you could get your way? <laughs> that was a question I had never really thought about and kind of took me by surprise, but it made me reflect a little bit. And maybe that's a good question to ask here at the end of A Case for Character. Assuming you've maybe read through the end or you may be thinking about some of the things I've been discussing, what would this actually look like if it was put into action? And I think it would look like a community of people, a church, taking very seriously what it means to be God's people in the world today. People who are actually embracing the reality of the gospel and delighting in the forgiveness of sins that God gives, simply rejoicing over God's love, God's perfect gift in Christ, his death and his resurrection, and then knowing that reality and being driven by God's purposes for them and the realization and appreciation of God's purposes for them to go out into their lives, out into the world, and do what God put them here to do. Knowing that they are forgiven to accomplish God's purposes, that they are justified to do their vocation, that they're redeemed so they can be fully restored so they can go out and accomplish what God created them to do. That's what it looks like. So, how does this look? This looks like a congregation where the pastor is not afraid in a sermon to talk to the parents about their responsibility to teach their children and give them some specifics about what they should be teaching. It looks like a congregation where the pastor's not afraid to do some moral instruction because he's, no, he's not being moralistic. He's actually teaching people what it looks like to be fully human. He's actually shaping people into the way of Christian life. He's actually helping people know what it means to be God's people. It's not moralism. It's simply training in habits. It's training in virtue. It would look like that. It would also look like a congregation where the pastor from time to time in a sermon gets quite specific about behavior that's expected and doesn't just keep, to keep it generic. So in other words, law preaching can become very specific and very articulated to the actual needs of his people. And he doesn't feel like he's cheating by doing that and doesn't need to feel like he's somehow forsaking his trust in the gospel. No, he trusts the gospel completely, but he also realizes there are responsibilities in his faithful preaching of God's will the law, to help people know what God wants, shape people, and form them into doing what God has created them to do, and he's not ashamed of that. So when the family comes and says, we need some help, our family's got some real struggles, can you help us figure out how to make our family work better with our children and with our marriage? And he can do that. He doesn't have to just tell them, well, you know, God's got gospel forgiveness for all of your failures and shortcomings and the guilt you're feeling, you're forgiven. He tells them that, yes. But then he can also say, now, let's work on some nitty-gritty things. Let's work on what you need to do to find some strategies. How can you figure out how to solve this? What can you do? And yeah, he can use resources from other parts of the world, the academic world and even the religious world. He can borrow from people who have written well on these things. And he doesn't need to feel like he's somehow betraying his doctrine to do that. He's actually being quite consistent in teaching people God's truth whoever is saying it, wherever it's coming from, and shaping people into that truth so they can learn to embrace and delight in that truth. And also, frankly, learn to live more complete whole lives as they're living more and more in sync with what God would have them to do. It needs to be taught. It's not intuitive. It doesn't just happen automatically. It doesn't happen just because they love Jesus or because you've given them the gospel full blast. They need to learn what these things look like. And you can teach them. And as parents, you don't need to feel bad about forming character. You work at it. You're intentional about it. And as a pastor, you can recognize, I can tell my people about what God expects of them without feeling guilt pangs. And as a teacher in a classroom with students, you can actually work on moral training and teaching about what virtues are, realizing that this is part of what God has called us to do as his people. That's what it begins to look like. It looks like people simply living their lives faithfully around God's word, um, delighting in what God has given them to do, and learning to celebrate these tasks, the mundane, routine, ordinary things, and realizing these things matter because they are tasks from God, and God has given them to us, and we learn how to do them better because this is what God put us here to do. That's what it looks like. And I hope, I hope that somehow what I've been trying to teach either through, the, through the book or through these videos you might have watched will help you to realize this is what God has put me here to do, and it's good that I do it. And it's part of what it means to be a faithful follower of Christ. Even in the Lutheran tradition, we do this kind of stuff, and we can do it with a great deal of zeal.